possession, a lot of control, but neither team kind of threatening the goal for, for us and for Porto. No, not really. Um, I think the possession was was very dominant in the first half and um, moved the ball really well, caused them some troubles, but they defended really deep and they got lots of men in the box and any sort of shot or cross shot seemed to be blocked by them. And you can see since the, the first game here at the Etihad that they've, they've worked on that defensive side of the game. They've made themselves more resilient and they'll be delighted to get out of that first half with, with a clean sheet. And I think... It's one of those when you look at it and you think it can't it can't go on like that, you know. Eventually they will break down, eventually there will be a deflection off somebody and um I think once you get one goal you might open up a bit more. Hopefully get us closer to that three one prediction, Sean, that we went. Um all our predictions are on, but Kevin, we were saying whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. My prediction's not wrong. I was gonna say nil nil at half time. You were I so yeah, that. keep watching people, <laughs> keep watching. There's two goals coming. Um well, we'd spoke about obviously Porter maybe pushed us a little bit more and tried to attack. That would suit our game a bit better. They haven't done. Where can you see maybe our goal coming from in the second yeah, half? Yeah, it's, it's really difficult. They've got everyone behind the ball. And, and like Danny said, if they're sitting there, it becomes really difficult to create the space. In many ways, you want Porto to have a little bit more possession um, because when they did come out um, in transition on the turnover, we're dangerous. And that's, I think that's where the half chance come from. Um, but can they keep it up for, for another 45 minutes? I'm not so sure. It's hard work, shuffling left to right and not having much of the ball. So I'm with Danny on it. Once one goes in, it, it could be a couple. Well, speaking of those chances, there was there was a couple kind of, like we say, half chances. The, the first one was that, that Sterling strike, which he, he seemed to take really well, Sean, the one across the box from the corner. Uh, and also Torres, and he was a great example of what you spoke about pre-show, where he finds that extra touch where other wingers wouldn't. Um, yeah, of course, but it's like the guy said, they're defending so deep. I think the situation which happened with Sir Sterling kind of showed you what you have to do when they get that deep. I think you have to take somebody on. You, you have to be, like, adventurous to try and draw other people out. And like I said, if, if he takes another touch, then another defender has to step towards him. And then somewhere in the box, there'll be somebody free. So I think... For us, as long as we keep the possession up, like the guy said, they, they won't be able to do it. Well, they shouldn't be able to do this for another 45 minutes. That possession stat as well, it's 66% possession for City. Six shots to Porto's one. I think we had that one on target from Sterling off the line. Um, on the defensive side of the pitch, we were saying Edison with a couple of... We love a rogue moment from Edison, but the, I think maybe do we think a little bit fortunate not to have conceded a penalty possibly in that first half? Yeah, I think it was um, a strange position to find themselves in. You know, normally a goalkeeper will come out of the balls in the middle of the box and it's an opportunity, but when it's out in those sort of fullback areas to be to be going out that wide, it seemed a little bit unnecessary. And I suppose when you get we got, he got away with it, so it was it was all right. It, it worked out well for him, but I think on another day it could have been a could have been a penalty. And there was um, a stat I actually got sent during the game uh, saying that it's the first time Gundogan hasn't started a Champions League game for City since 2018. He's, uh, he's started all our Champions League games. Do you think maybe we're, we're missing something that he brings that maybe Rodri or, or Fernandinho doesn't care for or not no, so potentially, much? I, I suppose it's easy to say that when we're sat here nil-nil. Yeah. The, the players coming in are more than capable. I, I think it's just a matter of not being... I don't know, maybe maybe embarrassed by the amount of possession. At times, I think the, the build-up's been great into the final third, and then it seems like we're a little bit embarrassed how long we're having the ball for, and then we're trying to force crosses. And I think it's just a matter of being patient and waiting for that right moment to unlock the door. And, and Sean, for, for you then, um, waiting for that right moment, is that kind of it? Patience is a, is a virtue with this. We've just got to keep biding our time and the goal shall come, do you think? Um, yeah, they just have to keep probing. Like like I said before, and the guy said, like at some point somebody's going to have a lapse of concentration or they're going to take a chance and try and dive in. And that, that will open everything up for us. But I also think when we get to the edge of the box, we have to try and shoot. Like You get deflections that go in or it goes between somebody's legs, the keeper can't see it, and, and things happen from shooting, basically. A couple more chances, hopefully, we'll take. And, and final word from you, Richard. We've been speaking about rotation, um, so I'm guessing maybe we could look to, to see a few changes in the, in the second half and if we possibly maybe need someone to come and get that goal. Jesus, maybe, do you think? Yeah, I think sometimes City do miss having that specific number nine. You know, having that person who, who knows how to play that role. And it's it's not a case of... 
he's a better finish than anyone else. It's a case of understanding what role to be in, what position of the pitch to be in. And with Torres, he's still learning. He likes to drift out wide. Sterling the same. And I think if you just have that focus point, he takes two defenders to look after that one player, and it will create opportunities for other players. I guess then actually, Sean, then as well, like so from there, then if that brings in it, will allow give Torres or, or Sterling or even Foden instance, then a little bit more freedom and space to hopefully impact the game a little bit more, do you think? Um, yeah, I have to agree with Danny there. I think if you've got like a normal number nine, like if you say like Jesus in this, for instance, it, he won't always pull out wide. He'll drop five yards deeper, which one of the centre-backs will go with him, which creates space for somebody to run in behind and we can get to stretch him in maybe a place where we haven't been before down the middle. Um, I wanted to ask you, because of course we were speaking off that rotation as well, Richard. Is it for a player, Do you, do you if you've started on the bench, do you want to come on and get those 15, 20 minutes or is it a little bit tricky? I kind of wanted at least a half, you know, to be able to impact the game. I know it's... I think as players, you want to play as much as you can. Um, we've always already highlighted that um, the size of the squad that, that Pep's got, there is going to be rotation and players are going to miss out, but they're going to be itching to get on. And unless they're carrying slight knocks, which haven't been reported to us, that they want to get on the pitch and as early as possible. I guess, though, it's, 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 it's difficult to get up to, to speed straight away. You kind of spend 10 minutes, do you, trying to climatise into the game if you do come off the bench, Richard? Yeah, but the, the, <clears throat> the beauty of the City squad, and he, he spoke earlier about saying they're not having a rest that's not what, it, what they call it. It's about rotation and stuff like that. You may only have 10 or 15 minutes to prove yourself to get a start in the next game. So you've got to be pre pre prepared. You've got to be ready and they've got to be warming up all the time. Make sure when the manager looks around, right, well, he looks like he's ready, get on there, make a difference. And if it is five minutes, 10 minutes, if you can show the manager you're ready, show the manager that you can make a difference, they've got a great chance of starting at the weekend. And, and I think as well, going on to a game like, like this one, it's not where you're under the cosh. So you're not, you're not backpedalling, you're not chasing runners. They're in total control. So it's, it's quite a nice game to go on to as a substitute, I'd say. Sean, what, what would be one of, maybe one of your first changes? Maybe getting if, we, if it's still the set Don't at the same Sterling point. or Phil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still got, yeah. uh, um, I, think, I think I'd bring on Jesus. I think I'd take off for run. I feel like, as Danny said, it's not a rest. Just for like rotation, he's most probably going to play some part in the game again on Saturday and he started against Burnley, if I'm correct. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think I'll take him off, save his legs a little bit. Say so maybe Kevin as well, after that, then would it be maybe if we're still searching for that goal, maybe losing one of those holding midfielders to give us something more? At the uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Look, City don't need need the win. So w would he just play it out? If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then we, we leave Porto with, with a point, which, which would be good enough for, for Pep, I'll take it. And then next game, if we get those three points, then that will mean we finish top of the group. But as Alistair Mann was pointing out in commentary, there will be some tough fixtures there for us because there are some good teams coming in in second place. Um, join us at full time and we'll be getting into the whole game, hopefully celebrating a City win and a uh, correct prediction from one of us in the studio. And of course, you can catch the second half of City Plus. Alistair Mann has got your commentary. We'll be handing over to him now and we'll see you at full time. He always said that in primary school that uh, he wanted to be the best footballer of the world. I was a shy, really, really shy person, so it was really difficult for me to make a lot of social contacts. He's one of the best players I ever turned in my life. You've got such a group of players that can achieve anything they want. Don't ever let it slip, because before you know it, you'll be doing a speech like me, crying. <laughs> and it's the end of it. Trust me, it goes that fast. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations to everybody. I know it's not easy to come here because always you have the mind what's going to happen, what's going to happen. If we lose, if we lose, if we lose. But if we lose, we lose. David Silva is one of the most jugadores más talentosos que ha dado el fútbol español sin ninguna duda. <laughs> well, we haven't seen Premier League football for 10 weeks, but Project Restart will finally be up and running. They use like a kind of a small stick and they use it in your mouth and in your nose. Sterling scores Manchester City's first goal since the restart of Premier League football. Well, some are saying it seems longer than 20 years, um, some are saying it seems like yesterday, but um, you know, fantastic memories from it, even now 20 years on. and. To have all the boys here today is, uh, is fantastic. Well, well, oh, and then it's City 